How's it going? My name is Chase and I'm going to tell you guys the basics of nutrition. So here's a little bit of my physique, what I look like, and I just want to talk about nutrition. I only have a few points written down here um, because a lot of people don't seem to understand. My friend got into fitness the other day and he's like, Chase, I want to eat, but I have no clue where to even begin with this process. So I thought I'd make this video for anyone else out there that might have the same problem. So I'm gonna break this down into a few different scenarios, okay? There's gonna be the bulking scenario, the cutting scenario, and then like the main gain scenario, which is kind of like, Greg Doucette talks about it a lot. Basically, if you wanna get big really fast, you don't care about gaining like excess fat and all that, then that would be the bulking. And that is actually fairly simple. I have a lot of people like, I can't bulk like bulking is actually probably the most simple thing I have on this list of procedures then there's cutting which is obviously if you want to lose fat without losing as much muscle as possible and then there is another subset to cutting which is cutting and you don't really care about how much muscle you lose you just want to get skinnier and then there is main gaining which is gaining muscle with as little fat as possible it's kind of similar to recomping although recomping is not always possible so Let's get started. So we're going to start with bulking because most people are just getting in the gym. They want to gain muscle and bulking is actually a great way to start because when you're gaining muscle, the more muscle mass you have causes you to burn more calories. Therefore, you can eat more and still lose weight later on. Therefore, you can eat more and have an easier time losing weight later on. The easiest way to bulk, right? The main thing you want to focus on is your protein intake. So especially when you're first starting the gym, this is the most important. You want to be eating at least one gram of protein per pound of body weight. And I'm going to tell you right now for later on the video, I do not do that. But I'm going to say when you're first starting out and you want to gain as much muscle as possible, that is the most important thing. You can even eat more than that. As long as it's spaced throughout the day evenly into four or five portions of protein hits, then that is sufficient so for example if you weigh 150 pounds right 150 150 divided by 5 is like 30 right so you should have five 30 gram protein hits by that mean like a protein shake in the morning then something protein like two hours later that's 30 grams of protein and something protein two hours later. It's also 30 grams of protein until you hit 150. It doesn't have to be exact. It can be around there. You can have some days a bit lower, some days a bit higher. As long as it averages out to that much protein, then you're good. Um, you don't have to have it exactly evenly spread either. Personally, I do meals where I have some meals that have upwards to 60 grams of protein in it. And uh, I think I've gained a decent amount of muscle. So, um, but obviously, if you want to be as efficient as possible, you want to spread it out into more hits. Okay, so let's get to the actual bulking part. Bulking, you have to eat more calories than you burn. So, basically, eat a bunch of food in addition to these protein hits. So, you can have these protein hits in your meals, like pasta and chicken, or you can have them on their own, like a protein shake on its own, and then maybe have rice cakes on their own as well. Although, I would not recommend rice cakes for bulking because you have so much more calorie dense foods out there like bananas um, or bagels. So great foods for bulking, I would say, are bagels, peanut butter, rice, bananas. Those are whole foods. If you're really, let's get in the first subset of bulking, like you're just trying to gain as much weight as possible. You don't care about excess fat. Okay, I would not recommend this, but you can literally eat whatever you want. I'm gonna be honest, eat anything, milkshake, steak and shake, whatever you want. It doesn't matter. As long as you're eating calories that are very high, you will gain weight. And as long as you're eating enough protein, you will also gain muscle, okay? Yes, you may gain more fat than you might desire, but that's what the trade-off is for gaining weight fast as possible. Although I wouldn't recommend doing this because I am all about aesthetic. And so personally, this is not my approach. Maybe if you wanted to be a power lifter or you just wanted to gain super amount of weight for whatever odd reason you have, this is what you would do. Okay. Next, we can talk about main gaining. So main gaining is like gaining muscle at a very low calorie surplus. To do this, I would not recommend 
counting macros because for example all that matters is calories and then protein okay the other calories can kind of be whatever you want and so if you want to main gain you should eat slightly above your maintenance calories you could go online look up calorie calculator or tdee calculator put in all your information and it'll give you a rough estimate i find these to be highly variant with the actual number that you burn so i don't even use this okay it says i burn 3300 calories a day i'm telling you i do not burn 3300 calories a day so i would basically start eating whatever amount of calories you want and then if you are gaining weight at a decent rate then i would say stick with that if you're not gaining weight up your calories a bit more by 100 or 200 and um see what happens after a week or two if you're still not gaining weight up them more obviously if you're getting too much weight you can lower them this is basically trial and error i know it's kind of annoying but that's why i would start with the tde calculator to kind of get like a base area of where you should be at So for the main gaining, you only want to have a few hundred calorie surplus, like 250 to like 300 calorie surplus. You don't need to be like 700, 1,000 calorie surplus. You don't need to. It's not necessary. And this would be the same concept of one gram of protein per pound of body weight. Good sources of protein are chicken, ground beef, steak, salmon, fish, shrimp, anything like that. You can have protein shakes as well, protein bars, anything of that variant. And you can, for this approach, I would try and stick more to the whole foods I talked about earlier, like the banana, bagel, stuff like that, oatmeal. Oatmeal is a great another source of carbs. Um, I would stick to things like that for this approach because obviously eating whatever you want does have like its limits because you cannot eat whatever you want and forever as much as you want infinity and not gain weight. So. I would recommend eating more whole foods and I would probably go for like a 70, 70, 30, like percentage wise, 70% whole foods, 30% kind of whatever the fuck you want. And um, as long as the calories fit, then you should be fine. But then that's another problem is not everyone knows how to count calories, nor do they want to. So basically it's very tough if you eat different things all the time. So this is another point that I just wanted to bring up. If you eat different foods every day, like let's say one day you're eating chicken nuggets, the next day you're eating ramen, you know, like it depends. It's very hard to not count calories and still be aware of how much you're eating because foods like this differ greatly in the amount of calories they contain. You can't say, oh, I had two meals both days, so they should be the same amount of calories. Although one day one of the meals was a burger and one of the meals was a milkshake and then the next day one of the meals was rice and chicken and the other meal was fish. Like, see those two days very, uh, differ very greatly in the amount of calories you consumed although you had two meals both days so um, that's why most bodybuilders you see they don't even really not all bodybuilders count calories even they just eat the same fucking thing every day and so if they want to lose weight they take out this much rice or whatever if they want to gain weight they add this much rice or whatever see so it's really easy when you eat the same thing every day to kind of up and down your food intake and then no if you'll gain weight or not. And then if you do gain weight, you just lower the food a little bit or up the food more if you want to gain more weight. So if you don't want to count your calories, I would just try and be very like mindful of what you're eating, at least in terms of like how many calories you should try and eyeball. And so if you're bulking, see, this is not really the biggest deal because I'm assuming you're not really like the most worried about the fat you need. So I wouldn't count calories if you're bulking, unless you're having a very, very hard time. If you're having a very, very hard time, then I don't count calories. Because what tends to happen is people think they are hard gainers when they're actually not. People think they eat so much food when they actually do not. I have so many friends and so many people that come up to me and say, hey Chase, I have such a fast metabolism, I cannot gain weight. And I tell them, okay, let me know what you're eating in a day. They're like, oh, I eat so much, Chase. I'm like, okay, show, tell me. And they tell me what they eat, and they eat like 1,500 calories or 2,000 calories. I'm like, bro, you're not a hard gainer. You just have a small stomach, okay? So I could 
like people think they're hard gainers and they're skin because they're and they're skinny. People think they're hard gainers and they're really skinny and just have fast metabolism. I don't think that's the case. 99% of the time. I think they just get full really easily. So in their mind, they think they eat a lot because they do for them. But relative to other people, they don't eat a lot. So for this scenario, I would recommend eating very high calorie dense foods like obviously peanut butter, banana, stuff like that. Um, Because those are easy to get down, contain a lot of calories. And I would not take mass gainer. Mass gainer is such a scam, such a waste of money, and it's so disgusting, and it makes you feel like shit after you eat it. I'm gonna be honest, mass gainer is the worst thing you could ever ask for, okay? Hate mass gainer. Anyways, so if you're a hard gainer, then I would recommend counting your calories loosely, at least, and the app I use for counting calories is MyFitnessPal. It's very easy. Although you usually need a scale for this and I would weigh everything by grams or ounces. I would not weigh anything by cup, half cup, blah, 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 because it can vary greatly because you can do half a cup and have like 10 more grams of rice packed in there or whatever the fuck, you know? So I would weigh by weight, not by cup measurements. And so then I would track it. It's And you have to be very careful when you track stuff like this because I have so many people that go on there and like I had one friend when I first started teaching him how to count calories and he basically said he had 120 grams of protein in one meal. And it's, I looked at his MyFitnessPal and it's cause it, he put lemongrass chicken and each it's set for the serving size. It said one serving, 60 grams of protein. But like how much is one serving? One scoop, one spoon? You don't know. So don't ever do the ones that say one serving or one blah, blah, blah. Do the ones that say a specific gram weight or specific ounce weight and use that. Unless it's like a patty and it says one patty is this much, then you can do that. Okay. But my friend thought he had 120 grams of protein. He's like, yeah, I hit almost all my protein in one meal. First off, that's bad. You don't want to hit all your protein in one meal. Second off, no, there's no way you ate 120 grams of protein in one meal. So at 120 grams of protein and chicken in one meal so i would be very careful counting your calories that's why i don't recommend it because like people usually when they start counting the calories they count it wrong but if you can do it right it'll help you this much and then once you get a grasp for how much calories food has after counting for a while you don't have to count after that and you can kind of head guess what you eat for example i can kind of look at whatever food you show in front of me and I can kind of assume what calories it has. Or at least if I make the food, I'll know what calories it has. Obviously, if there's some oils and blah, blah, blah that I don't know about that you put in there, then it might be more or less calories than you think. And that's the problem with restaurants. Eating out, you never know how much oil and how much blah, blah, blah they put in stuff. Although my fitness pal does have a variety of restaurants on their app that have the calories laid out already. So that is nice. Okay, so I feel like that covers most of bulking. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the description. I'll reply to every single question I get, unless I get like a jillion comments, then I probably cannot. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the cutting portion of this video. So for cutting, the main essence of it is eating less than you burn. It's very simple, that's all you need to know. A lot of bodybuilders don't cut calories, like I said, so They'll just eat less rice than they did on their maintenance days because they know how much they need to maintain their weight. And they'll take away a cup of rice a day. And then if they lose weight, good. If they don't, they'll take away another cup or half cup of rice. It doesn't matter. Okay. So basically for cutting without counting your calories, I would recommend having consistent meals that are relatively the same each day. And these meals, I would focus on the proportions of the foods in the meals. So if you're not counting calories and macros, basically you would still want to get one gram of protein per body weight. If you wanted to cut, keeping as much muscle as possible, one gram of protein per body weight, even maybe more even. People would argue saying a little bit more would be better because protein burns calories when you eat it. So you're probably better off eating more protein because it's also more satiating according to some studies. So. There's a lot of benefits to eating more protein, although there are a lot of benefits to not eating more protein. For example, 
more people enjoy foods that have less protein like and i have carbs so anyways back into it i would focus on your meal proportions and by that i mean if you take a plate for example i'm gonna be honest i saw this on athlean x years and years ago and this is what i tell anyone if they ever ask how do i do this without counting calories okay take a dinner plate a dinner plate you can use it for breakfast it doesn't fucking matter when you use the plate but it's an imaginary plate in your head this is a hypothetical half of that dinner plate make it protein so for breakfast this would be eggs or egg whites preferably egg whites if you're cutting or eggs if you're not cutting and so half the plate will be a protein for lunch and dinner or any other meal of the day it could be salmon chicken and if you're cutting preferably lean meat like lean ground beef lean ground turkey fish things like that salmon is also pretty fatty so i wouldn't have that every single meal maybe the, your last meal um and then for one fourth of the plate you would eat a carb and preferably a good digesting carb like for example in breakfast oatmeal a piece of toast anything like that an apple okay but be very mindful. This one fourth of the plate should be proportional to the half of the plate of protein. So for example, I would not have a fourth of the plate, like seven pieces of toast high. Sorry, I'm doing a plate like kind of this way. I should do it like this, right? So one fourth of the plate, carbs, half the plate, protein. And the protein, let's say you put like egg whites, right? For the one fourth of the plate of carbs, don't stack it like seven pieces of toast high but it's still on a fourth of the plate okay then you're just cheating yourself at that point basically you want a proportional to that so you'd have like one piece of toast or two pieces of toast maybe like one serving of oatmeal two servings of oatmeal with that half a plate of protein okay and then for lunch you could have like maybe two pieces two pieces of bread for a sandwich you know you could have a tortilla you know to wrap up your protein in if it's lunch or dinner you could have a wrap to wrap up your protein in i recommend lavish wraps they're great um things like that okay so one fourth is going to be a simple carb that is not crazy high calorie like ice cream or something like that and then the other fourth of the plate just for health purposes is going to be vegetables so you can have it whatever you want in the morning if you're making an egg white omelet that one fourth could be mushrooms that you put in your omelet okay and if you're doing for lunch, that one fourth of the plate could be broccoli, you put in your chicken. That's fucking basic though. You could do anything else like onions and mushrooms and your like fucking chicken stir fry with a little bit of rice or noodles or inside of a lavish wrap, things like that. Those are examples of great foods you could eat while cutting. And if you have that for three to four meals for your day, like those examples I just told you, you will definitely lose weight. I think so. Unless you're having your proportions crazy high, then you will lose weight. Okay, and now that's how you do it without counting your calories. And another thing while we're talking about that is don't eat too much. Okay, don't eat because you feel like you have to eat. Okay, if you're cutting, then you should just eat until you're full. And when you're full, stop eating. But make sure you eat enough protein though. So although I'm saying stop eating when you're full, that means you should probably focus on finishing your protein first, then moving to the other parts and that. Unless it's a wrap, then you'll eat it all at once. But I wouldn't overfill. I wouldn't eat too much because I have a problem where I make all my food, I have it on a plate, and I feel like I have to eat all of it. Even though maybe 75 to 80% of the way through, I'm super full, you know? I'm like, oh, I just got to finish the rest. But then if you think about it, if you don't finish the rest, you can then eat that other portion later on in the day to help keep your hunger levers low for longer with the same amount of calories instead of force feeding it now and then later you'll get hungry and you'll end up eating more calories because you're more hungry because you put it all in one sitting when you weren't even hungry and blah blah, blah. okay that's my take on it um now if you were to count calories i would start with a 500 calorie deficit and you can do this through a tde calculator at first let's say you're not losing weight at the at the calories that you think you should be then you have to eat less calories or you have to do more cardio one of the two okay so I, I would only change one though at a time when you're changing things for your calories you should do it as simple as possible so you know what worked and what doesn't i would start changing the calories first if you don't mind 
but once you get really low you kind of don't really want to change your calories more because you don't want to eat like nothing basically so at at some point you're going to start wanting to add more cardio instead of taking away calories for me for example i don't like doing too much cardio so i eat fairly low calories i'm going to tell you my calories for my cut that i'm doing right now this is not going to be the same for yours and it varies greatly on how you look and how much muscle mass you're carrying and how active you are in the day. And there's so many different variables that it will not be the same for you. I'm cutting on 2,100 calories right now. And I'm not losing a crazy amount of weight. I'm eating 2,100 calories. And my cardio is very little though. Okay, I'm not doing very much cardio. I some days get I try to get 10,000 steps like five days of the week some the other days of the week I just sit in my room doing nothing all day so I get like 2,000 steps at the gym so I would recommend um, so that's the example of what I do a lot of people think they're eating 2,400 calories and they're doing no cardio just sit in the room playing video games all day and they're like why am I not losing weight I'm only eating 2,400 calories it's like because you sit there all day so you're not burning any calories anyways that's why you're not losing weight at 2,400 calories that's me for example it won't be the same with you so basically I would start your calories where a TDE calculator probably tells you 500 less than what you burn okay so your TDE calculator will tell you how much you burn you'll put 500 less and you'll eat that if you're counting your calories one gram protein per pound of body weight and then you will see if you lose weight or not if you don't lose weight lower it 200 more calories or 100 more calories whatever you want See if you lose weight after a week or two. If you don't, you lower it again or add more cardio, okay? That's basically the essence of it. Great foods for cutting are egg whites, lean meat like chicken, and something that fills me up a lot is f there's like these things called carb counter tortillas, and it's like a, tor a little tortilla, like a taco tortilla is like 35 calories, which is great. Usually they're like 100. And uh, a big size tortilla, which you can make a burrito out of, is like 45 calories. So it's awesome. And then there's this pasta on Amazon called Light Elbows. And they have different things like penne, mac and cheese, elbow things. And it's very low calorie. For two ounces, it's 100 calories. And for normal pasta, two ounces is like 200 calories. So it's half the calories. It's has a fuck ton of fiber though, so I'd be very careful. Both of these have a fuck ton of fiber, so they may make you bloat, but I'm gonna be honest, if you're super lean enough, the fiber the fiber bloating should not affect you that much. Like if you're lean enough, even when you're bloated, you'll still look lean, basically is what I'm trying to say. So if it helps you get insanely lean and you're eating these fiber foods, you may like, unless you feel bloated and it hurts your stomach, then don't do it. But I do it because I'm like, I don't care if I'm a little bloated because I'm still leaner than if I were to eat normal pasta. That's my outlook on it. Okay. And so also potatoes. Potatoes are super filling, whether it be sweet potato or normal potato. I find normal potato to be more filling and less calorie overall because it's more filling. But sweet potato is a nice sweet thing if you want like a sweet potato instead of a normal potato. You know, it's like basic knowledge. Okay. Um, whatever you want to eat, you know. And now let me get into the point of whatever you want to eat. So this is the point where I was talking about in the beginning of the video. It's cutting, but you don't care about how much muscle mass you lose. Okay. At that point, you'll just eat at a very a calorie deficit, right? If you want to lose weight really fast, you could do a thousand calorie deficit. That's kind of crazy. I wouldn't recommend. But if you do a thousand calorie deficit, then you know this because you get your TDE calculator, how much you burn, and you eat a thousand less. Okay. And if you're not losing weight then obviously you're not in a thousand calorie deficit okay if you're in a thousand calorie deficit you should lose weight very fast but for example it's still eating in a deficit and so what i'm trying to my point for this subject is that if you don't care about how much muscle you want then you don't have to stick to the one gram protein per pound of body weight rule you could eat whatever you want essentially in terms of carbs fats protein as long as it keeps you full and you're okay with the diet and you're eating less calories than you burn. For example, I am doing something similar to this approach right now for my cut. I've realized that I don't want to be, I am 190 pounds or so right now, decently lean, so I've realized I don't really want to be crazy big on the Mr. Olympia stage. I just want to be aesthetic. 
So I don't care about building much more muscle, at least in terms of like mass. I'm fine with maybe getting a bit more quality muscle or making my muscle a bit more like quality, you know, in terms of like, I still want to work out. I still want to do all this stuff. I still want to look good. I still want to get sick pumps and whatnot. And I don't want to be skinny. I still want to have my muscle mass, but I don't mind losing a bit of muscle in order to achieve a leaner state of being. So I am not eating one gram of protein per body weight because I do not care about being as efficient in muscle growth as possible at this point in my life. So I'm eating, keep in mind I'm weighing 190 pounds or so, I'm eating 120 to 150 grams of protein. Some days, if some days I'm in a really savory mood, so I want to eat a bunch of protein. So some days I do go up to 190 grams of protein. Some days I go up to 200, but most days I average around 160 grams of protein. That's 30 grams less than one gram per body weight. And I don't notice a crazy amount of muscle. I'm not like fucking deteriorating out here. Okay. I am still losing weight while retaining muscle. So for me, this works out pretty well because I can eat more foods that I want. For example, like Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt is another great food for cutting. See, these are more foods that I just don't remember off the top of my head that you can ask in the comments. And so Greek yogurt, I love Greek yogurt and it's a great macro ratio actually, but it does have some carbs with it. So if I eat Greek yogurt and like chocolate chips or Greek yogurt and whatever the fuck I want to make, you know, Greek yogurt and rice cakes, rice cakes are great for cutting. So if I eat Greek yogurt and rice cakes that might have some carbs, you know, um, I just don't stress about getting one gram protein per body weight because for me mentally, that puts a lot of stress on me to eat a bunch of protein. So I kind of eat protein even when I'm not even hungry and I just eat a bunch of protein and it doesn't satiate me. So then I'm just super hungry later on and I end up binging. So this works for me in order of eating less protein, eating more of what I want kind of in terms of like, I want more carbs because I enjoy eating carbs because I love food. So I eat a bit more carbs and then I eat a bit less protein than the most efficient ideal diet. Okay. And when I say I eat more carbs, that doesn't mean I'm eating like 500 grams of carbs. Okay. I'm still eating very low carbs compared to someone who's like on a crazy bulk. I'm still eating like between 150 to 280 or 290 carbs a day, depending on the day. Like I said, for me, it's different most days because I don't have anything I'm working towards. I don't need to eat more carbs one day to get a better workout the next day. You know, it doesn't matter for me. I'm just trying to slowly lose weight at a good rate so I can be more aesthetic overall. And I don't mind losing muscle in the process as long as it's minimal. And I don't mind how long it takes or, okay. And I don't mind not building muscle either because it is possible to build muscle in a calorie deficit, especially if you're new, but that's not what I'm going to get into today. So this is basically, I know it was probably very confusing and I kind of jumped around a bit, but if you have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments. And on a last note, I wanted to talk about consistency. Consistency, consistency is key. That's why I eat what I eat and it's not the most ideal approach to gaining muscle, but for me, it helps me stay consistent for a longer period of time without binging. So that is why I do what I do. If you can only eat 60% healthy food and 40% not healthy food, that's okay. As long as your calories are decently in the range, if you want to bulk or cut, as long as they're in the range, it's fine. As long as it keeps you consistent for a long period of time, because if you cold Turkey jump into this eating what chicken, broccoli, rice, or chicken, broccoli, potato, then for every meal of the day, then you're, you're not going to stick to it. Okay. That's just, that's just facts. Okay. You won't stick to it and you'll end up binging and you'll end up quitting. So you need to start into it slowly. Maybe start eating very healthy, like four days of the week. And then three days of the week, we eat whatever you want. You know, it's better than eating whatever you want every day of the week. As long as those three days of the week where you eat whatever you want, you're not like going fucking outrageous than you normally would. Okay. So most people I know would do five or six days a week eating decently healthy and have like one or two cheat days. But on those cheat days, they wouldn't eat like 10,000 calories, you know, maybe they'd eat maintenance. 
So maybe they'd eat like 3000 calories, but then those other days of the week, they're like pretty healthy dieting. Okay. So just as long as you're consistent, that's the most important thing. So do whatever works for you. Now, have a good day.